Therefore, we have only one presenter. He is Mohammed Iqbal Anjou. He is coming from International Islamic University, Islamabad in Pakistan. Uh, there are several international Islamic universities all around the world. One of them is in Malaysia, which I have also worked for two years, back 15 years back. Uh, there is one also in Nigeria, isn't it? Yeah, I think, yeah. This is uh, initiated by uh, OIC, Islamic uh, Cooperation Organization. Uh, in Indonesia also. Also in Indonesia. Uh, I wish to introduce uh, Brother Iqbal Anjum. Uh, he got his undergraduate also in uh, Pakistan in uh, International Islamic University and master's degree there, and also he got his PhD degree in the same university. No, from hmm? Deakin University, Australia. Uh, from, you know, yeah, I have read it, but now. Uh, I have a master's degree from Kansas State University, USA, and doctorate from Deakin yeah. University. Yeah, his uh, doctoral uh, thesis, PhD thesis, is about economic effects of the external debt crisis for Pakistan. External debt crisis for Pakistan. It is not about labor economics. Yeah, eh? nice. Okay. Uh, but the topic is very uh, interesting. You published it in 19, 2000. It is not written here. Is it published? Uh, no, it is published on the Deakin University uh, Research Online. Mm -hmm. It's published. Okay. Uh, I guess also you have. Uh, the CV of uh, Brother Iqbal. Therefore, I will not go in details. There are many articles published uh, by him. Today, he will talk about labor economics, since the general theme of the workshop is labor. Uh, I congratulate the organizers choosing labor. Uh, as you are aware of it, uh, Islamic economics is developing in finance, uh, in practice and also in uh, writing, the literature. We should uh, push also other issues in economics like labor. Therefore, uh, it is very uh, correct uh, to choose uh, this labor uh, as general theme. The topic of the paper, which will be presented by Mohammed Iqbal Anjum, is a progressive universal Islamic perspective on free mobility of labor. He will talk about free mobility of labor in Islamic perspective. Uh, I will give him 20 minutes. Uh, after his presentation, we have discussed uh, for 10 minutes. And after that, we will have opportunity to make comments and ask questions for 30 minutes. Please, brother, you can start. نحمده وصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم uh, Honorable Chairman of the Session and Honorable Participants of this esteemed Islamic Economics Workshop 3 uh, I first of all uh, feel privileged to be here and I thank from the core of my heart uh, uh, I offer my thanks to the organizers of uh, this conference who are uh, providing us with generous hospitality. Uh, and now I uh, start my discourse on 
uh, a progressive universal Islamic perspective on free mobility of labor. I can just start with uh, the uh, abstract of this paper uh, and the uh, fact that the contemporary world as well as the contemporary Islamic world uh, in particular are experiencing serious problems of poverty, unemployment, inflation, uh, and uh, uh, there is uh, not much hope in many uh, Islamic countries that these problems uh, will be solved in uh, the near future. Uh, so uh, I uh, propose uh, in this paper that there is a viable uh, institutional solution uh, to the problems of poverty, unemployment, etc. Uh, so that solution lies in the uh, unity of Ummah, uh, unity of the Muslim countries, and in the unity of the entire humanity. Uh, I will commence uh, my discourse by uh, highlighting the statement of Maulana Rum that come on, uh, deny your ego, get united with everybody, so long as you remain in yourself, you are a particle, but if you get united with everybody, you are a mine, an ocean. Believe that all spirits are one, and all bodies are one, just like almonds in quantity, hundred thousands, but there is the same oil in all of them. There are many languages in the world, in meaning all are the same. If you break the cups, water will be united, and will flow together. So my paper portrays a unique, progressive, universal Islamic perspective on free mobility of labor. And in this context, I highlight the Islamic view of humans as global citizens. Islam recognizes humans as global, universal citizens who may be called universitizens. Therefore, Islam confers the right of free mobility of humans, labor, the workers, in the global and universal framework. And we get insights about the uh, universality of the humans as a global citizens from the teachings of the Holy Quran and the sayings of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, وَمَنْ يُحَاجِرْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ يَجِدُ فِي الْأَرْضِ مُرَاغَمًا كَسِيرًا وَسَعَطًا And the meaning is, and whoever flies or migrated in Allah's way, he will find in the earth many a place of refuge and abundant resources. Islam encourages workers free mobility and migration from one territory to another territory in order to improve their living standards. And this fact is uh, implied by the following ayah of the Holy Quran. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. وَالَّذِي جَعَلَ لَكُمُ الْأَرْضَ ذَلُولًا فَمْشُوا فِي مَنَاكِ بِهَا وَكُلُوا مِرْ رِزْكِهِ وَإِلَيْهِ النُّشُورِ The meaning is, it is he who has made the earth manageable for you. So traverse ye through its tracks and enjoy of the sustenance which he furnishes, but unto him is the re resurrection. The aforementioned view is also supported by the Holy Sunnah of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He himself migrated here and he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam encouraged his uh, companions to migrate to those from those places which are uh, having scarce means of livelihood to the places which have abundant means of livelihood. Consequently, the surplus population of Hijaz initially migrated to the fertile lands of Egypt, Iraq, Syria, and later it gradually migrated to Abyssinia 
الجیریا مراکو اسپین سوڈان ٹیونیسیا ایٹسٹرا سو اسلام ریجیکٹس نیشنلسٹک باؤنڈریز اینڈ بیریئرز اگینسٹ فری موبیلٹی آف لیبر اینڈ دیر بائی اسلام اچیوز اینڈ ریچمنٹ بہت اسپریچل اسینٹ اینڈ میٹیریل اینڈ اکنامک ڈیولپمنٹ اینڈ امپاورمنٹ آف آل ہیومنس ان اے یونیورسل گلوبل فریم ورک اینڈ فار ریئلائزنگ یونیفارم اینڈ ریچمنٹ اینڈ امپاورمنٹ آف ایٹ لیسٹ آل دا کانسٹیچوینٹس آف مسلم مما دیر از نو ریشنیل فار دا ایگزٹنگ ڈس انٹیگریشن آف مسلم مما انٹو ففٹی نائن مسلم نیشن اسٹیٹس In the light of the teachings of the Holy Quran, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala says, "Wa tasimu bi habli Allahi jamiyam wa la tafarraku." And meaning is Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, and hold fast all together by the rope which Allah stretches out for you, and be not divided among yourselves. And I will quote the statement from an intellectual, Dr. Parmanik in Malaysia. He interprets universalism in islam is manifest through the concept of ummah representing the islamic community all over the world in light of this matchless standard of islamic universality the contemporary 59 muslim nation states are characterized by the islamically undesirable artificial barriers imposed on the international mobility of millions of muslim workers and islamic economic rationale for so uh, the islamic countries can get united economically on the platform of islamic common market on which there is already existing consensus amongst the oic countries in the form of the resolution passed uh, in the summit uh, perhaps in that was held in iran so an islamic economic rationale for islamic common market is provided by the persisting extremely poor development record of a majority of the disintegrated Islamic world's 59 national economies spanning over a long period of time. And the paradox of the Islamic world is that of a uniquely resourceful contemporary Islamic world having the largest territory on the earth as a whole, endowed with immensely large diverse manpower, reservoirs of energy, oil, gas, coal, minerals water and oceanic wealth and petro dollars and it is still exhibited mostly by the poor population most of the muslim countries fall in the category of the low medium human development countries alarming poverty situation in at least 12 muslim countries for example percentage of the population living below 2 dollar a day international poverty line is 76.5% in bangladesh in 19 in 2010 74.3 percent in benin in 2013 60.5 percent in chad in 2011 72.7 percent in guinea in 2000 2013 43.3 percent in indonesia and 78.8 percent in mali and 76.1% in niger 82.2% in nigeria 50.7% in pakistan and 60.3% in senegal and 82.5% in sierra leone in 2011 so against the background of a highly unbalanced intra oic distribution of population and labor force Almost 18 contemporary Muslim countries have unemployment rates in excess of 10%, and that almost 29 Muslim countries have unemployment rates in excess of 8%. This serious unemployment problem of the contemporary Muslim world presents a crystal clear economic rationale for the establishment of the Islamic common market, according to John Kenneth Galbraith. migration is the oldest action against poverty it is good for the country to which they go it helps to break the equilibrium of poverty in the country from which they come therefore a prospective key institution for alleviating poverty in the contemporary islamic world is the islamic common market which is capable of triggering free mobility of the poor and unemployed and solving the twin problems of 
unemployment and poverty in the Islamic world? And what are the prospective macroeconomic effects of free uh, mobility of labor in the framework of Islamic common market? First, efficient migration. In a scenario of persisting wage differentials among the Islamic countries in the framework of the ICM, the poor come unemployed and their families will accomplish efficient migration for the wage outcomes, such as that the wage in the destination country is greater than the wage in the home country. Then second is the significant reduction in incidence of unemployment, poverty, and inflation in the framework of Islamic common market, which is characterized by the free mobility of labor, capital, and goods, etc. Significant, uh, okay, more equitable personal as well as functional distribution of income all over the globe. A significantly improved and balanced distribution of population and manpower all over the globe an increase in the people's employment, output, income, personal consumption, trade, savings, investment, aggregate demand, output in the Islamic world and the whole world caused by an efficient migration, a highly improved standard of living of the masses all over the globe. And I will conclude uh, with two points that universal free mobility of all human beings be uh, universal free mobility of all humans as an investment in human, human capital. It is regarded according to the economic theory of migration. It is the labor migration is regarded as an investment in human capital. So universal free mobility of all humans being an investment in human capital is a key to the solution of problems of widespread unemployment, poverty, underdevelopment, and disempowerment of all humans in the whole world. The ideal landscape of the most of the prospective Islamic common market member countries due to their geographic proximity on the world scene shown in the Islamic world map, Islamic world map below reflects ample prospects of successfully establishing the world's greatest self-sufficient Islamic common market. And you can just have a look at the uh, map of the Islamic world. Thank you so much for your uh, patience. Thank you, uh, Brother Iqbal Anjum. Also, we saved time from its presentation. Uh, you have five minutes more, actually. But good, uh, you made it very briefly. Uh, the, the text is also published. <coughs> it can be read from the proceedings of the workshop. Now we have a discussion, uh, therefore I will not make any comment on the paper. Uh, our discussion is from Sakarya University. Uh, Professor Fatih Savashan uh, will make the discussion about this paper. Uh, <coughs> he, uh, Fatih Savashan uh, got his PhD degree from Kansas uh, university. Uh, his PhD thesis was about underground economy by title of articles on underground economy. Now he is teaching in Sakarya University and also they offer Islamic economics uh, programs undergraduate and also PhD yeah. on, on the uh, postgraduate master's, master's. master's degree. And now uh, I will give 10 minutes to Fatih for his discussion, please. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Before beginning uh, to talk about the paper presented by Iqbal, uh, I would like to thank the organizers of this workshop. We have been discussing uh, labor in Islamic economics for two days, and I also thank you, uh, the last warriors of this workshop. This is last session, and I see that half of the participants are missing uh, in the second day of this uh, uh, workshop. But um, I myself benefited a lot from this uh, workshop. I again thanks, uh, thank the organizers of this workshop. Um, 
I would make some general remarks uh, on the topic, and I will talk about uh, main themes of the paper presented by uh, Iqbal, and I will talk about some main conclusions and also make some uh, suggestions. The paper is on uh, free mobility of uh, labor. Uh, in broad terms, it is about uh, actually Islamic common market. Uh, we know that Muslims uh, in Turkey and around the world uh, long for Islamic uh, common market, but we all know that uh, uh, what is on the ground nowadays is not in line with this desire, uh, especially um, for the last uh, a few years, we have been observing some sectarian and tribal warfare among Muslims. But uh, in any case, uh, this this proposal is refreshing. Uh, we know that, for example, in Turkey, uh, late Erbakan, uh, head of welfare party, was talking about uh, free mobility of labor and also uh, some other features of uh, common market. And I believe that many Muslim organizations around the uh, Islamic world uh, have, have been promoting this idea. So there are some main themes that uh, paper uh, outlays. Uh, I like the uh, term universalism because it, uh, it uh, puts some emphasis on uh, Islamic universality of I Islam, uh, which is a religion, basically. This element maybe uh, is valid for, for some other religions, too. But uh, we believe that Islam puts uh, great emphasis on uh, universality. Uh, we know that, as brother pointed out, there are many artificial barriers imposed on the international mobility of uh, workers uh, among um, uh, Islamic world as well as uh, around the world. And we know that uh, poverty, high in, uh, unemployment, and relatively low human development uh, might constitute some rational behind this uh, proposal of Islamic common market. We know that, and the paper points that out, migrants are more innovative and better, better, better educated. So if people move freely to benefit from wage differentials, then poverty, unequal income distribution, and unemployment would be reduced. Uh, after pointing out this, uh, I have some numbers uh, about migrant workers around the world. And we all know that uh, there are some advantages and disadvantages uh, resulted from uh, migration, immigration of uh, people. We all know that capital move freely with almost no restriction. But uh, when it comes to labor, uh, even uh, some, uh, some countries, some organizations uh, which, has, uh, which have succeeded in uh, this area, even they have some barriers. So uh, after pointing out that uh, fact, um, I will talk about some specifics of the paper. Uh, I see that in the paper there are a lot of long tables. Uh, instead, it will suffice to provide some average numbers for uh, variables such as um, unemployment or human development uh, as done in some parts of the paper. I will uh, raise just uh, two main areas of improvement. The first one, the paper is missing the place of labor migration in the context of Islamic common market. So uh, 
labor migration would be some part in this uh, common market. And also, uh, paper seems to missing to discuss some advantages and disadvantages of labor migration that might arise. Uh, keeping in mind, many Islamic countries uh, have uh, high income inequality, uh, high uh, labor sur surplus, so there would be some um, problems that might arise from, from this uh, free labor movement. Uh, so, coming to the uh, first part, uh, we have an example, a good example uh, of integration. EU is one of the, uh, or only, only uh, successful uh, organization succeeding in uh, becoming integrated uh, economy. So we can observe, or the uh, writer of the paper would observe the process of integration. So from that experience, uh, uh, he could uh, uh, add some uh, to the paper. It, seem, it seems like uh, phases such as capital mobility, goods mobility, cross-country investment come first, and then free labor mobility comes. So uh, there could be, uh, and if, if we, we are going to propose uh, uh, an Islamic common market, then we would uh, somehow uh, follow this process. So uh, the paper maybe is missing this part. There are some disadvantages. Brain drain uh, is one of them. So uh, I wonder if we would like to have doctors from Somalia, for example, freely go to some other places in Islamic world. And another point we can make is labor, that complete the domestic labor would increase both production and improve uh, uh, income distribution, but especially unskilled workers' mobility can worsen both. So uh, this, this point uh, would be discussed in the paper, uh, especially when we see uh, is, uh, countries, Islamic countries, we see that there are a lot of migrants that, uh, that are uh, uh, welfare dependent. Another issue uh, when it comes to uh, labor uh, mobility, workers' remittances, uh, money earned in destination country can be transferred to origin uh, country, but uh, this would be good for origin country, but especially for, uh, for the destination country, if uh, people, uh, migrant workers, try to send uh, money as much as they can, then they would become uh, socially uh, disintegrated in the uh, society that they live in. So uh, workers' remittances would be another issue to, to be discussed. Um, I, the paper is refreshing, but I believe that it jumps to the conclusion very quickly. So before um, discussing advantages and disadvantages, or before discussing process of becoming international common market, it jumps to conclusion that if there is free mobility of labor, then uh, there are many problems that can be solved easily. Uh, but we know that uh, economies of Muslim countries either have rich natural resources or produce most agricultural goods, or cheap goods, goods that have little added value or uh, raw materials. So I wonder where this migrant labor would be employed if, if they uh, move freely to some other countries. So uh, I believe that uh, the first, uh, pa uh, first a few phases of integration would be uh, would be 
uh, after take, after uh, succeeding in first a few phases of integration, labor mobility would come and would benefit more. And also, uh, the paper seems to suggest that aggregate demand would increase as people migrate. This would be true if they become workers because demand requires, first of all, purchasing power. Uh, what if they become unemployed or cheap labor, as is uh, the case in most of the Muslim countries? And also we know that in many countries, migrants are cheap laborers or welfare-dependent uh, people. So to conclude, it seems to me that migration would help fight some uh, problems and also cause some uh, other problems. So uh, I, I suggest that uh, Brother Iqbal can discuss uh, in the revisions of the paper some, at least some of the uh, basic problems that might arise from uh, free mobility of labor. And I thank you a lot for listening. Thank you, Fatih. Uh, also, we save time. Uh, I missed uh, to mention about Fatih Savaşan that he has a published book about international migration. Maybe for those who have interest in it, can read. It is in Turkish, isn't it? Yes, it is in Turkish. It is in Turkish. Now uh, we finished. Uh, also, I thank uh, Fatih Savaşan for the comprehensive discussion and for his uh, suggestions uh, to the uh, paper presenter. Now I will open the floor for comments and questions. You can either ask in Turkish or in English. Uh, we have simultaneous translations, isn't it? Uh, we have time. Uh, you can be free to make comment or ask questions to both presenter and also to the discussant, please. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Muhammad Tayyib uh, and I'm from Afghanistan, but uh, studying my master's degree here in Anadolu University, Eskisher, uh, doing economics but writing my master thesis on uh, development of Islamic banking in Turkey, uh, the experience of Ottoman Empire in comparing the Ottoman Empire Islamic finance with the current Islamic finance uh, presented in the world. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Professor Iqbal or Sir Iqbal for his uh, great uh, uh, article and uh, present presentation. Uh, yeah, mobility is the best way to reduce the unemployment or to bring it to zero uh, unemployment in Muslim worlds. But the problem in Muslim worlds, in, in, in non coordination of the Muslim countries, are the problem that uh, they stopped us to uh, reduce this unemployment in the Muslim world. But only as an Islamic economics researcher, I'd like to just uh, remind all st uh, professors and students here, if you focus nowadays again the Muslim economy or Muslim uh, Islamic capital market again uh, is gaining his position in the market like the Sukuk or, or the recent uh, Islamic uh, capital markets in Malaysia, in, 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 in Indonesia, and recently in Turkey, that the world, the West, is now focusing on Islamic economics. So this will be the best chance to educate Muslim people because for the Muslim capital, for the Islamic capital markets and for the Islamic finance and Islamic bankings, the employee will need, the Muslim people will be needed to imply it. So if we have uh, this chance and we use it, this will help uh, to, 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 because 
Well, Islamic finance is now getting out of the Muslim countries. Like uh, you think about UK, the recently, like the big amount of sukuk was bought by Turkey, by United States, but by, by non-Muslim non countries. So, if you use this chance uh, in a best way, in a better way, we can let the the the, the Muslim uh, employment to cross the borders and go to the west and east and all countries. This was uh, a comment, but I have uh, a question which has two parts. If we say mobility, then we have to let people income to our countries as well, from the non-Muslims, like from the West or from, uh, fr from the non-Muslim countries to Muslim countries. And today we know that uh, technology is with the West, and they have a good education with the West. So if we let the mobility and let the non-Muslim employment to come to the Muslim countries, they will have all the posts in all the, 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 the positions in our countries. So what will we do the Muslim people which have a low technology and a very low level of education? And the second thing is today, uh, because I, I, I asked that question because in Afghanistan, uh, one American is uh, receiving the wages which is equal to 2,000 Afghan wages. One American wage is equal to 2,000 Afghan wages. Uh, the second part of my question is that uh, today uh, the European capital, the European market, they they, they ask uh, for Muslim countries, uh, like they, they they call the from poor countries, like Muslim countries, labor to pay them a less money in in ask them to do more. So isn't it against universal uh, declaration of law of labor? If it's against that, then why like Muslim countries or we researchers are not focusing on that to let the European Union court or, or the, the WTO organization to, to give the same wages which is given to other European Union members to the Muslim countries in place as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm from Af Afghanistan and uh, very good to hear that you are studying in Turkey. Uh, he caught a good point. Yeah about migration of or uh, free movement of labor of Muslim non-Muslim. You didn't make that uh, separation, Muslim, non-Muslim. You can... Yeah. Uh, in fact, you know, the Islamic approach is universal. So uh, uh, here I have focused on the integration among the Muslims uh, you, uh, because uh, the non-Muslims may not share the uh, Islamic ideology and the VN. Uh, so at least the Muslim countries, Islam's approach is universal. So who has to translate this into reality? The believers. So uh, then comes the question that uh, is the free mobility of labor applicable to only Muslims or to the non-Muslims? So we say uh, Islam is for the welfare of all human beings. So in that context, you know, all are freely mobile across uh, all regions of the world. So this is my response, you know, uh, to uh, this question. Yes. As far as the other question about the, uh, there may result, you know, some uh, uh, problems of uh, uh, income distribution, as he's talking about, that those who are most educated in the West, they can acquire high uh, high positions, you know, and their salary will be much more than that. But this is all right. There is a uh, competitive world, you know. So the people will be envious, uh, you know, um, uh, of the position which is held by the foreigners. They will become like them and, you know, they will improve their qualifications and credentials, and, you know. They will assume their positions and their income will also get increased. That's it. So um, it is a short-term problem, not a long-term problem. Another question or comment? Thank you. Türkçe'de sorabilirsiniz, yorum yapabilirsiniz. Yes, my student. I forgot your name. Huh? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Abdurrahman. I'm from Ethiopia. I'm a PhD student in finance at Marmara University. A professor Nejda uh, student. Uh, thank you very much, uh, for your presentation. When you talk about free mobility of labor, 
and uh, migration uh, moving labor forces from one country to uh, the other i was feeling bad you know that every year thousands of Afri young african workers travel to european and, uh, arab countries to get job due to bad uh, barriers as professor uh, fati mentioned and due to different restriction a lot of Africans uh, die every year. So that uh, instead of, for example, encouraging a free mobility of uh, labor forces, uh, because there is difference in economic development among countries, why not encourage uh, foreign direct investments? Maybe, for example, if you take uh, Ethiopia, uh, labor force is very cheap. You can employ a worker with $100. As compared to other countries, it's very cheap. So that instead of uh, taking labor forces from some countries, especially developing countries, into another countries, why not we encourage foreign direct investments in these countries? Instead of just like creating a job and also develop, um, improving the uh, economic performance of uh, these countries. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for your important question. Uh, you see, uh, first of all, I should clarify uh, my position in the context of my presentation of this paper. And that is that I focused on the Islamic idealism about the free mobility of labor, that Islam is the flag bearer of the uh, universal mobility of uh, labor. And then, uh, you see, uh, I tangentially discussed that Islam does not, doesn't give only ideas and idealism. So Islam also has institutional framework offered by it. So there is the uh, issue of brain drain and you know, identified by our brother Fateh. You know, they are, of, um, in, they are not as important in that situation because who will establish the Islamic common market? The, the Khilafah that the Shah Waliullah, uh, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he introduced the idea of Khilafatul Khulafa. So in the framework of Khilafatul Khulafa, this institution of Islamic common market will be established. And uh, so there are many other, you know, universal institutions uh, which we can uh, design to actually translate these ideals into reality. So I touched upon, okay, Islamic common market is one such framework, is it? And uh, uh, then um, uh, I, I, I just hinted at those, you know, uh, regarding, uh, uh, you know, uh, so my focus was uh, on uh, that, uh, the free mobility of labor, but then I just pointed out that what is the institutional mechanism uh, that Islam offers? And this is not, again, a utopian exercise, uh, but the Holy Prophet actually implemented the uh, free mobility of labor across regions. And as a result of that, the living conditions and standard of living improved. So f then uh, I should say there was question about foreign investment. So when I talk about Islamic common market, so I, I hinted at what is Islamic common market? It is characterized by free mobility of labor, capital. We are not denying any, uh, you know, uh, role for the foreign investment that will be there. But all these measures, you know, they will have cumulative effect on the development of the humans, you know. So we don't deny any role to the private foreign investment. But that will be there. Uh, but along with that, you know, even UNO acknowledges it is a, uh, the for free, free mobility and the migration is a human right. So uh, there is convergence of views, you know. So we should allow this to happen that people are mobile across uh, you know, countries, across regions. Uh, so, so many problems which we encounter, the problem of inflation. There will be abundant supply of the goods, you know, as a result of free mobility of goods. So inflation will come down as a result of that. There will be greater competition, you know. And then there is a problem identified by my big brother uh, about the unskilled workers, that their lot will, uh, you know, that their conditions will deteriorate in, in this scenario. No, in fact, those who, about whom we are talking about, 
they are the migrants they are the most dynamic people of the society the, they are the most they are risk take they are the risk takers and they take the risk and they have the capacity to take the risk so the go into adverse scenarios you know and they uh, compete in adverse conditions uh, with those who are in advantageous position they acquire knowledge they get same kind of human capital uh, through uh, you know as we said you know that uh, migration is viewed in the labor, theory of labor migration as an investment in human capital so it results into higher wages you know people become more productive if they are pre previously not as productive so because of this investment in migration you know uh, so they become more productive they acquire more knowledge you know uh, through travels and uh, so on by 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 investing in education abroad where they go so previously they were poor in their own country uh, but they become highly successful professional in the countries where they go you know so it is very progressive approach i'm very much fascinated by it and i advocate it regarding i have not pointed out because we had a limited size of the paper we were restriction on the size of the paper so in fact i am pleased to inform you that i first presented my paper in malaysia science university malaysia in 1995 the islamic common market ideals realities and challenge uh, tasked ahead like that uh, so then i um, okay developed my interest in writing a book so i have an unpublished book with me you know so it is one part of that you know that i have just presented thank you so much yeah, i will welcome the question um i i really appreciate what what you're doing uh but there is also the political dimension yeah. i mean remember that we we are still operating with nation states yeah. uh and in the 1980s there were uh for example the arab manpower agreements to to uh, uh for preference for arab labor throughout the arab states that didn't work i mean by the 1990s it was basically completely abandoned the only countries that have continued to abide by it were iraq and libya right um so there's that dimension part of the problem was the politics of migrants also comes into play the fears of certain migrants uh uh from certain countries and certain political persuasions uh created a situation from the gulf states where they were expelled right left wing basically yemenis palestinians nasserist egyptians and so on were expelled and they were replaced by asian uh workers now you might say well they can find asian muslim workers that might be an interesting scenario but this needs to be taken into consideration because we haven't reached a point where there are these open borders and open politics along with it because migration today is a security issue since 9/11 the securitization of borders and migration flows has been gradually increasing and increasing and increasing uh and that's not likely to disappear soon i don't think given the circumstances that are developing in this region uh alone Yeah. Uh, in fact i appreciate your question it is very uh, pragmatic question you know and uh, my response to this is that uh, all this is not a problem at all in the islamic uh, vision because we uh, what model we have in uh, our uh, front uh, so in front of our eyes we have model of the ansar and muhajirin you know the muhajirin uh, they migrated from makkah mukarramah they were having a period of adversity experienced by them uh, they were being persecuted so they the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and companion went there uh, to madina munawwara and they were wholeheartedly welcomed by you know the people of madina and they were not regarded as burden on them so the islamic brotherhood you know uh, that all this is premised in in the ayah of the holy quran bismillah ar rahman ar rahim inna mal mu'minuna ikhwa so they think along the brotherly you know dimensions so they don't consider as burden or this is not that kind of nationalism which you are talking about and the politics conditioned by the capitalist nation nationalism no we are negating that and we are having ideals in front of us and there is all all these kind of tensions so you see they wanted to share this idea of islam i mentioned that in my paper Uh, the 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 holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam experienced poverty uh, poverty adversity and he disliked this and he said we should get rid of uh, this 
and he encouraged the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam established you know because the market which was dominated by the non muslims in madina munawwara uh, that was exploitative in lending context for example uh, so the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam created a separate market for the muslims in madina munawwara and those people who they were offered over the immigrants or the muhajirin offered with all sorts of help they shared their gardens with them their property with them they were ready to share and then they, those people who were migrating they said no just show us the way to work and to business we will do we will not be burden on you so they considered themselves as brothers instead of being burden on each other uh, thinking along these lines no this, this is negated you know unified in the true sense of the universal brotherhood you know yeah and uh, this is very important uh, that in the existing nationalistic framework uh, uh, there will always be you know problems th that you have talked about the problems you know uh, but the kind of uh, you know institutional mechanism we have in mind you know like khilafatul khulafa uh, that is progressive that is equalitarian and egalitarian so it is good for muslim so i i start, started from the discussion uh, my paper started with a, a quotation from molana room and then from hodgson i quoted him so he said that it will be of great benefit if the muslims could show that the beneficiaries of the islamic solutions or islamic uh, you know remedial measures or whatsoever the islamic vision uh, they are muslims as well as the non muslims so they are the stakeholders in all this so we can show this you know uh, this in a universal context which is offered by islam thank you so much thank you thank you please uh, i can uh, talk about just uh, a few lines on this political dimension turkey was trying to uh, a few years ago, up until uh, 2012 maybe turkey was trying to establish some some sort of uh, cooperation between Muslim countries like uh, zero uh, issue policy with neighbors and Turkey, Syria, Iraq were enjoying uh, more mobile uh, uh, factors of production but uh, it didn't work out well uh, after the crisis in Syria and also in Iraq. I think what we need is a leadership like Germany in EU after things go wrong a leadership a country uh, with leadership skills and capacity would uh, uh, come in place and uh, do the things right way so we don't have that kind of leadership unfortunately in your presentation you had a question about somali doctor what what was that about? Uh, when we talk about mobility of uh, free mobility of labor, I think we too uh, we should talk. Uh, we should take into consideration of skill uh, composition of labor. So uh, when people move, uh, they get benefit. Uh, uh, they move because they would. Uh, get benefit out of this moment, but some countries have uh, little uh, fewer uh, skilled uh, workers. So, like uh, I example would be Somalia. There, there are uh, fewer uh, doctors. For example, if you allow uh, doctors more freely in Islamic world, then uh, maybe. Uh, the shortage of skilled workers would be even worse. So that that one thing uh, I I would like to point out. Uh, I have just one more point to uh, respond uh, uh, in light of the discussion by Brother Fateh, and that is that we talk about Islamic common market, but ground realities are quite. Uh, uh, different, you know, as you talked about sectarian tensions, you know, in the Islamic world, you know, in countries, you know. Uh, so, uh, in fact, you know, uh, the scale of that tension is not as uh, high as it used to be in case of the European countries who uh, got, who destroyed each other 
in the World War I and World War II. Uh, we don't, we, yes, there are tensions, but if Europe can get united, you know, in spite of destroying each other, you know, the, the mutual destruction, you know, uh, so uh, the Islamic countries can easily overcome this sectarian tension once we have uh, good leadership. Thank you so much. Thank you. Actually, we should admit that there is a gap between real politics and idealism. Yeah. Uh, now we have five more minutes. Uh, we can use that, please. Bismillah Rahman Rahim. I have very uh, short observations. The first is that when we are talking about the uh, uh, common market, so common market is a comprehensive concept, not only restricted to the labor or the capital or the transfer of technology or anything. It is a very comprehensive concept that everything is moving freely. The mobility is free for capital, for labor, for all, all the things, skilled, unskilled, and so on. And even uh, uh, the, the commodities, there's a no tax, uh, uh, and, uh, they, and, and if there's more demand, uh, if, if there's a common market, then aggregate demand will increase, and when aggregate demand will increase, then employment will increase, and so on. And it, it is happening in the uh, European Union. The second thing is about uh, the question uh, which was raised about the security and all these problems. This was also uh, experienced by the European Union. When I was a student in UK, one of my friends, he was from uh, Poland, and he told us that whenever he is coming to Heathrow Airport, a lot of security uh, uh, actions uh, will be taken for him, and he's sitting there. Sometimes he was sitting there eight, eight hours. And now, uh, uh, in 2012, when I was in UK, I have seen a number of Polish workers are there. So this is not the problem of uh, security, I think. It's a problem of the policy and the leadership. Thank you. Thank you. Another brief one? If no, is there any? Var mı? Yorum yapmak isteyen Türkçe de yorum yapılabilir, soru sorulabilir. Before I close the session, uh, I wish to thank to the co-organizers. Uh, we have two, four, five different or, uh, organizations uh, contributing to this workshop. ILEM, ILKE, IGYAD, Istanbul Commerce University, and Istanbul Chamber of Commerce. I appreciate their effort for this, and I hope this will continue uh, in next years. This is the number three of the workshops. I hope number three, 30, 300 in, in the future. Also, I thank to the participants, to presenter, to discussant. Thank you. I close the session.